it's a wonderful knife review, horror comedy spreads holiday cheer, not fear. High concept holiday slasher it's a wonderful knife continues the time honored tradition of injecting horror into cozy holiday fare. Director Tyler McIntyre, Tragedy Girls, V slash H slash S slash 99, and writer Michael Kennedy, Freaky, blend Scream 2 with It's a Wonderful Life to plunge its central characters into a bizarro snow globe of horrors, wearing their cinematic influences on their sleeves throughout. It's not the horror that dominates this high concept mashup, though, It's a Wonderful Knife is more interested in spreading holiday cheer and warm fuzzy feels. Winnie Carruthers, Jane Widop, Yellow Jackets, finds her life completely upended on Christmas Eve when a masked killer embarks on a murder spree and kills Winnie's best friend Cara, Hannah Huggins, right in front of her. Winnie winds up saving her brother Jimmy, Aiden Howard, and the quaint town of Angel Falls when she thwarts and unmasks the killer. One year later, Winnie's disheartened to find the rest of Angel Falls has moved on while she wallows in grief. When she wishes aloud that she'd never been born, Winnie finds herself transported to an alternate version of Angel Falls, one where the killer is more bloodthirsty than ever. It's the supporting cast that most sparks It's a Wonderful Knife to Life. Justin Long, Barbarian, Goosebumps, delivers one high camp performance as sleazy town developer Henry Waters, a hat tip in part to John Waters, no doubt. The overpronounced veneers and unnatural spray tan only heighten the absurdity of Long's narcissistic politician, and the actor's seen chewing all but ensures he steals every moment on camera. Winnie's Aunt Gail Prescott, Catherine Isabel, brings the requisite feistiness befitting of her moniker. But it's high school outcast Bernie Simon, Jess McLeod, that provides the emotional center, her steep arc from town weirdo to charming co-hero contributes most of the sentimental charm. Less effective is Joel McHale as Winnie's dad, his brand of humor feels at odds with the distinct feel-good tone here. That's at its most jarring when he tiredly smirks through a particularly intense emotional scene. It's the budding relationship between Winnie and Bernie that engages most, though that's not to say that the horror is forgotten. McIntyre keeps the pace moving at a brisk speed, with inspired staging for the bloody kills that attempts to make full use of holiday iconography. Chase scenes from Scream 2 get repurposed for the wintry weather here, and look for I Know What You Did Last Summer to factor into some of the slasher thrills, too. Don't worry, the holiday influences are just as varied and strong as the slasher influences.